the next topic is Atla expresses her doubts about the Atla. So in the previous topic, we talked about how the uh, Iron Master had sent his daughter Atla to the Iron Meal to persuade the butler to come home for the Christmas Eve. And with her kindness and mm, kind words and her respect to the butler, Atla was able to win over the confidence of the butler who uh, eventually accepted the invitation to visit the Iron Master's house. So uh, in this topic we are going to discuss how Atla expresses her doubts about the battler. How the, her doubts, um, doubt or doubts is formed on the basis of how the battler reacted, behaved when he saw Atla at the I uh, meal. He was alarmed and he looked suspicious. So because of that, Atla had formed some doubts about his uh, characteristic. So that is what we are going to discuss here. Okay. So the next day was Christmas. He was invited for the Christmas Eve and the next day was Christmas. The Iron Master was happy that he would be spending his time with an old friend. So the uh, Iron Master is still thinking that the battler was his old friend from the uh, regiment. Okay, And he was happy that he would be spending the Christmas with an old friend. So. Uh, what he decided to do is help the butler uh, in some ways. So he tells his daughter, first of all, we must see to it that he gets a little flesh on his bones. That means he wishes to feed the butler well and uh, make him regain his physical strength. And not only that, he says, and then we must see that he gets something else to do than to run around the country selling rat traps. Uh, after gaining the physical strength, the Iron Master decides to help the butler to um, get some job, which will be much better for him than going around the country and selling uh, rat traps. So all these indicates the Iron Master's kindness and generosity. He is a very kind and generous person. Mm. Okay, so he told Atla that they need to feed him well and provide him with a better business than selling uh, rat traps. So he was not thinking about the present situation, how to help him. Mm overcome the present situation, but uh, the Iron Master was far-sighted enough to decide to help his friend to uh, set up a better business so that he could have a better life or living standard. But when uh, the Iron Master told Atla about all this, Atla said that she was doubtful about the battler, as he didn't display the slightest sign of being educated. So she shared her opinion about the battler with her father. So she told her father that the battler uh, did not display any sign of being educated. Uh, according to her father, he was in the uh, army. Uh, with him in uh, uh, his uh, earlier days, youth days. But when she saw him first time at the meal, he did not show any sign of being educated. So what did she say to her father is, last night I did not think there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated person or educated man. So that is her doubt. However, the Iron Master told her to have some
stations. Okay, the Iron Master, the uh, father told his daughter that she should have some patience with him. Maybe she did not notice um, that he was educated because he was in a very miserable condition at the present. So because of that miserable condition, maybe he was not able to show or display his uh, uh, being an educated person or he being an educated person or he being in uh, an army. Uh, everything is because of the present situation. That is what the father told Atla. Just then the door opened and the stranger entered the room. As the father and daughter were having the conversation about the uh, stranger, the door opened and the stranger, that is the paddler, the vagabond, entered the room. And what do you expect? Okay, that is interesting for us to learn. Okay, so uh, when he entered the room, he was completely a changed person. At least physically, he was completely a changed person. Why? Because now he was well groomed, he was taken care of. He had uh, a bait and his hair was cut and he had shaved himself. Okay, so the valet, that is the servant, had bathed him, cut his hair and shaved his beards and moustache. So because of that, now he looked well groomed, clean, tidy and neat. So he was physically a completely changed person. Okay, so moreover, he was dressed in a good looking suit of clothes which belonged to the iron master. So he was also dressed well. Okay, so he was given full uh, dress that belonged to the iron master, full suit that belonged to the iron master. That means he was dressed in the iron master's clothes. Uh, so because of that, now he was physically a different person from what the iron master and his daughter had seen the previous day at the iron mill. Okay, the next topic. Now, the reaction of the Iron Master when he saw uh, the paddler who had now completely transformed into a different person. The Iron Master gets angry, the paddler retaliates. Okay, so now why did the Iron Master get un uh, angry with the uh, stranger whom he considered to be his friend? And why does the paddler retaliate? Okay, so this is again an important point. What does this mean? So that means the Iron Master is completely surprised to see the changed person, the transformed person. He did not expect to see this man. He was expecting to see a different person, a friend from his Richard days. To that the tram was no friend of his. He was angry and shocked, more shocked, because he realized uh, that the stranger was not his friend. He was completely a different a stranger to him, a different person. And in that dim light, he had mist uh, mistook him to be his friend. So he says, it, it is not my fault, sir. I never pretended to be anything but a poor trader and pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge. But no harm has been done. At worst, I can put on my racks again and go away. This is what the butler told the um, iron master. Butler said that it was not his fault that the Iron Master ma had made a mistake because he said he had never pretended to be his friend. Do you agree with him? To some extent, yes, because he refused uh, very, you can say strongly, that he wasn't uh, willing to go to the manor house. Uh, yes, he uh, hit his true identity with the hope that he could get some money, but he uh, refused the invitation to go to the manor house. 
So that is why he said he never pretended to be his friend. So because of that, he was not at any fault. Okay. Uh, the butler made no attempt to delude them any longer. So he did not mm, attempt try to delude means cheat the father and daughter. He told them that he was not Captain mm, Olive as he was addressed earlier and he was just a poor trader. He explained that he never said to the iron master that he was Niels Olaf, right? And uh, we agree with him because he never said that he was Niels Olaf. He just kept silent. He had even pleaded and begged for not coming to the manor house. So uh, he is telling the truth that he had pleaded to the iron master as well as his daughter that he was not willing to go to the manor house. Okay, and uh, one more thing is he says, now I'm going to tell you, Mr. Ironmaster, how things are. This whole world is nothing but a big rat trap. All the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese uh, rinds and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble. Again, he uh, warns the Ironmaster that the whole world is a rat trap and all the riches and wealth that, that the Iron Master is enjoying now will act as the bait to trap him, to catch him into that rat trap of mm, suffering, delusion and sadness. Uh, so this is what he warns the Iron Master. The Iron Master said that the butler had not been honest and he would take him to the Sharif. The Iron Master was angry that the butler was not honest with him and the Iron Master warned him that he would be handed over to the police for cheating on him, for not being honest. The butler got agitated and said, that the whole world was like a big rat trap and the Iron Master is about to get into that rat trap, got, get caught into that rat trap and he would also, uh, as I said before, feel uh, sad and disappointed because of the riches that he enjoys. Okay, so, uh, one important thing is now the opinions, the difference in opinions between the daughter and her father. Okay, so to some extent, uh, the Iron Master was very kind and generous. Uh, in the same way, his daughter was also very kind and generous, but they were uh, a bit different from each other. The Iron Master was kind to the people who were close to him. Uh, like uh, normal people, most of the normal people are kind and generous to the people who are close to them. Uh, but when it comes to extending that beyond the closeness, going uh, farther away, that differentiates a person from each other. What we uh, know here is that the daughter is different from her father because she is kind and generous not only to the people who are close to her, she is kind and generous even to the people who are not so close to her. She actually keeps the spirit of Christmas. So here, Adla argues on behalf of the battler. So that means Adla um, came in support of the battler why? Because the iron uh, master asked the butler to leave. Okay. So when he was asked to leave, Adla wanted him to stay back. She felt that they had promised the butler Christmas cheer and it would be wrong to send him away. So as I said, she told her father that it is wrong for them to send the butler away on a Christmas Eve because it was actually their mistake or actually it was them 
who has invited him to the house and made a promise to have a good Christmas Eve. And she wanted to keep the spirit of Christmas and let the butler enjoy one Christmas Eve, at least in his life at their home. So all these indicate that she is uh, very kind, generous, and her kindness and generosity extends to um, people who are beyond her closeness and family members, unlike her father. Her father was kind to the battler because he thought uh, the battler was his friend. Whereas here, even after realizing that the battler was not her father's friend, she was very kind to him and she wanted the battler to spend the Christmas with them. So this differentiates her from her father. So we could say she is more mutual and understanding in her extension of love, kindness, and generosity. So the vagabond was surprised by this gesture. Okay, so when she showed so much kindness, generosity, and understanding towards the uh, vagabond, he was surprised by her character, her attitude. So she said, I'm thinking of this stranger here. He wa walks and walks the whole year long, and there's prob probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and can feel at home. Wherever he turns, he is chased away. Always he is afraid of being arrested. So she is thinking about the condition of that poor man who uh, did not even have safe place to spend the night and he is also feeling afraid of being arrested by the police. So on that particular uh, Christmas Eve he wanted, sorry not he, she, Atla wanted him to feel at least safe and cared for uh, at their home. Okay, Adler further added that the butler must have been through a bad time as he was always chased away. He could not even sleep unafraid. The Iron Master gave in. Okay, so she uh, convinced her father that they should not turn him away on a Christmas Eve. It is very uh, unchristian. Uh, because it was actually them who had made a promise of a happy Christmas Eve that evening. Okay, And she even pointed out that he could not even enjoy a sleep, a uh, sound sleep, without feeling afraid. So uh, at, la at last the Iron Master, the father, gave in and allowed her to keep the butler home for the Christmas Eve. <clears throat> the butler was allowed to stay on for the Christmas, but the only thing he did was to sleep soundly after that. Okay, So uh, as we said, he did not uh, have a sound sleep, good sleep for a long time, which is very evident from what he did the whole day or the night. The only thing that he did was sleep. He did not do anything. He got up to eat uh, and do other necessary things. But uh, other than that, he slept soundly after that. So uh, uh, whatever Adla had said is true, that he did not enjoy any sound sleep before. And now when he got the chance, the only thing that he was doing was sleeping. He was sleeping all the time. Okay, so. That's what he did. Okay, the butler becomes a changed man. The last important topic, we are coming to the uh, end of this lesson, is the butler becomes a changed man. Uh, changed man. <clears throat> 
So the next day, the paddler and his daughter, sorry, the next day, it's not the paddler. This is the iron master. There's a mistake here again. The next day, the iron master and his daughter went to the church for Christmas service, leaving the vagabond at home. Okay. So for the whole evening and the night, the butler slept at the manor house. And the next day was Christmas. So the father and the daughter, that is not butler, iron master and his daughter went to the church for Christmas service. And they left the vagabond, the butler at home, as he was sleeping at that time as well. Okay, so they went to the church. They returned home and Adler was very sad. Okay, so they returned from home, uh, from the church to home. But while returning back on the way, Adler was feeling very sad. Why was Adler feeling very sad? This is very important for us to know. Because at the church, they learned important uh, news. At the church, they had learned that a rat trap battler robbed the old crofter who once worked at Ramshaw Ironworks. So this is the news that they heard at the church. People were talking about a robber. And when they, they listened, it turned out that the robber was a rat trap sailor. Okay, And he had robbed the crofter of his 30 chrono. Now, the father and daughter realized that they have left the robber at home. So because of that, Adler was feeling sad. Why was Adler feeling sad? Because she trusted the man and she was very kind to him. And now she realized that he had robbed an old crofter. So because of that, she was feeling sad. Then what was the feeling of her father? How did he feel? He said, yes, that was a fine fellow you let into the house. I only wonder how many silver spoons are left in the cupboard by, the, by this time. So this is how the father felt. Okay, uh, The iron master told Adler that she had actually allowed a robber to come inside the house and allowed him to stay in their house. And now he is also suspicious. <clears throat> that the uh, butler would have run away with all their silver wares. The iron master was furious. He was angry. He thought by the time they would reach home, the butler would have escaped with all their silver and other valuables. So he was very angry, uh, maybe at Adler as well as the uh, vagabond, and he is now very sure that the butler had run away with their silverware and all the other valuables. When they got home, the iron master asked the valet if the butler was still there. Okay, as expected, as soon as that got home, the iron master asked his valet if the butler was, butler was home. What answer do you expect? What would be the answer from the valet? Gone. Okay. The valet informed him that the fellow had left, but he had taken nothing with him. So you now observe the change in the battler. The valet surprisingly informed the father and daughter that the battler had actually left the house. But as I said, surprisingly, he did not take anything with him. Actually, he had left something uh, for Adler. Instead, he had left something for Adler. He had left a gift for Adler. Okay. Adler opened the package and found a small rat trap with 30 chrono. Okay, so she opened the package and inside the package she found a small rat trap and in the rat trap were three wrinkled 10 chrono notes and a letter. So why do you think the butler had left the 30 chrono? Is it a gift for Atla or what else do you think is that for? 
Okay, so he has left a letter, and when she le uh, read the letter, she has learned why he has left those thirty krona. He has written, "Since you have been so nice to me all day long, as if I was a captain, I want to be nice to you in return, as if I was a real captain, for I do not want you to be embarrassed." This Christmas season by a thief, but you can give back the money to the old man on the roadside, who has the money pouch hanging on the window frame as a bait for poor wanderers. So, so this is what he has written. So the kindness, generosity, the kind of respect that Atla has given to him, she had addressed him as captain, had completely transformed him, and now. True to his mm, title of being called a captain, he has risen to that, and now he wanted to be a nice person so that Atla will not feel ashamed of helping a person who was uh, un ungrateful to the generous person. So she, he did not want to embarrass her. Okay, so because of that, he rose to the mm, level of a captain, and he had even left the thirty krona, which he had asked Atla to return to the rightful owner, whom he again says has left the thirty krona as a bait for a poor wanderer to fall into. Okay, so uh, with her kindness and with her generosity with her understanding and with her respect to another human being, uh, she was able to completely change the uh, paddler and made him a better human being. The vagabond had written that since Adler had treated him like a real captain, he also wanted to be nice to her because he does not want Adler to feel ashamed because of helping a person like the paddler himself. He wanted the money to be returned to the crafter. Now he has become honest. Okay, so this is the letter. He further wrote that he would not have been able to escape the rat trap if he had not been raised to the status of a captain. So what he is saying is with Atlas generosity, he was able to rise to the status of the uh, captain. And it was Adla who actually helped him um, escape from the rat trap uh, and change him into a better person. So all this, what the writer is saying is all these baits of riches, wealth, title, actually uh, are like the baits which make us become corrupt, cheaters, and thieves also. But if we are able to come out of the rat trap, then we become honest, we become humble, we become more respectful, like the butler has become now. He has become a better human being. The um, better human characteristics that is lying innate within us were awakened by the kindness and generosity of another person in in the form of Adler. He even signed the letter as Captain Warren Staley. Okay, so as he was treated like a real captain, he even signed the letter as Captain Warren Staley to tell Atla that he is now a changed person and he will actually lead the life of a uh, captain, dignified, disciplined, and honest life of a captain. So he was completely a changed man and that change came because of Atla's true uh, love, honesty, and generosity, and understanding. Her love, was different from her father. Her um, generosity was different from her father. It was true because uh, it was unconditional. Her father's uh, generosity, kindness, love 
all these were based on conditions that the man was close to him, whereas her uh, kindness, love, and generosity were unconditional. She did not expect anything in return, or she did not expect to give it to only those people with whom she has some association. And because of that true uh, love, generosity, understanding, and kindness, uh, the Butler became a better person like herself. So this is a beautiful story. Okay, now the writing assignment, you can answer these five questions. What happened when the Iron Master discovered the true identity of his guest? Why was uh, the butler allowed to stay on at the manor house even after uh, uh, recognizing that he was not uh, the Iron Master's father, uh, sorry, a uh, friend? Iron Master's friend. Why was Adler depressed when she returned from the church service? What was the Christmas present the butler had left for Adler? What was it that changed the butler? How do we know that he had changed? Thank you.